What some people did, and what we used to do who people, uh, to, for people that did debate it with us, and very few people did, is that they would break down the word messenger. Yeah. And they would, and they would justify, and we even did it a few times. We justified calling him the messenger to the skeptics by saying that anybody who brings a message is a messenger. Mm -hmm. And so we justified it that way. But in, but in the mind of the religious person who thinks that they're on, their, on a road towards God, in their mind, they're thinking about a, messenger, a specific messenger of Allah. In that context, we have to, we had to correct, each, correct ourselves and each other mm -hmm. that the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger. He's a, he's a seal of the prophets, mm -hmm. you know, in that context. But, but sometimes in English, we have a play on words, yeah. you know, and we have a tendency to defend something that we want to do uh, or say or teach uh, because... Uh, we feel comfortable with it. And so um, in that context, many people who might still be uh, loyal to that old teaching might defend that label for Elijah Muhammad by saying, of course he's a messenger. I'm a messenger too, and you're a messenger too. Playing with words now. Yeah, it's a play on words. Yeah. But, 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 but Allah knows our heart, and if we're thinking in our mind that this is a specific person who was sent by God with a message and with a prophecy, then we're going to be judged by Allah. Yeah. Now, we're going over a little bit of our time. We usually cut out at about 30 minutes, but we are requesting to go a little bit over, because this is very important, especially when a pop star, a celebrity like Snoop Doggy Dog, some of our uncles might not know who that is, but you have a lot of the youth, people in the community who look up to someone like this. Obviously, they should not, but they might see someone like this who accepts this way of life and now we have to set the message straight on what true Islam is and what this uh, way of life is. Mm -hmm. So we covered that true Islam teaches equality between the white and the black and all of humanity, no racism. We talked about that God is not a man, which the Nation of Islam teaches. And we talked about now that the Elijah Muhammad definitely was not a messenger from the creator of the heavens and the earth of law. And we talked about the famous Malcolm X, who also was involved with this movement. And then he went to the Hajj and he came back and he accepted and denounced these teachings and accepted the true way of life of all the prophets and messengers, Islam. Tell us, can we, and I remember you mentioned before that this, uh, our brother Wallace D. Muhammad, mm -hmm. and he had left the Nation of Islam, but did, I don't know if you mentioned this in the last show, that actually Elijah Muhammad, towards his deathbed, he also denounced this, his teachings and him being a prophet. Is this, is this true? Yeah, yeah, I was told that he took Shahada, you know, and before he passed away, you know, but... The, uh, I want to I want to briefly touch on what you said about Snoop Dogg because the young people bring that to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not impressed. Have, ha have they have they uh, mentioned this to you? Yeah. And I'm yeah. but but be honest with you, I'm not impressed. Yeah. That Snoop Dogg, or if anything, or did he did something like that because I don't, just as much as I wasn't impressed when the rappers use profanity, or, and I'm not impressed when rappers talk about the, the illicit sex with women. I'm, I'm not impressed when rappers or entertainers talk about using drugs or drinking alcohol or getting high or, or, use, or stealing cars. I'm not impressed with everything they do just because they're famous. Yeah. I'm not impressed with that. If he wants to make, if Snoop Dogg wants to make a conscious decision to join a nationalistic group, fine, mm -hmm. you know. And if it helps him to improve his morals, if it helps improve his morals the way joining the Nation of Islam helped me improve my morals back in the early 70s, then, then, then you know, I'll give him a pat on the back if that's what he's trying to accomplish. Yeah. But, but, but I have a problem with disguising nationalism with Islam, as we said earlier. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, if I have to weigh the good against the bad, that, that there's some people that want to clean their life up, you know. But I'm not impressed or feel happy and want to celebrate you know, because he wants to call himself Muslim now, and he hasn't really learned the, the, the real truth about what the Quran is actually telling us to do. This is, no, this, this is not a, a criticism against an organization. You know, I'm not here to criticize the Nation of Islam as an organization. I'm only talking about as a former member 
um, minister at that. And a, and is, a, it, is, yeah. a, is that like the one of the highest ranking? Yeah, I was getting there. I was a s assistant minister, and in the months that Elijah Muhammad passed away, I was supposed to go and meet him. I was and, yeah. and, and become a full fledged minister. But I was doing the teaching. I was opening up temples around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you know, and so forth. I was doing all of the work, you know. But my point is, is that I know what attracted me. I know what cleaned me up. But then, but then I was only cleaned up from, from physical vices. But then when I took Shahada in 1975 under Imam W.D. Muhammad, and I learned that there was a, a huge problem that I had that I had to deal with Allah about, and that was associating partners to him and accusing him, and it's an accusation, accusing Almighty God of appearing in the form of a human being. When I realized that, I had to change and I also had to make Tauba once I found out what Tauba was. Tauba means? Means repentance. To yeah. I had to repent yeah. for, for saying the thing. And then I had to go back to people I had been teaching and undo. I had to debrief all of these people, you know, and tell them, say, you know, what I was telling you before, you know, a year ago or whatever, that was incorrect. Black man is not God. White man is not the devil. The Caucasian man is not the skunk of the planet Earth. The black man is not the God of the universe. This stuff that I was teaching and was learning is not even true. The, the, the God of the universe is Almighty Allah who created the universe, who cannot be seen, cannot be put into some type of container with a physical description, you know, and that no person is better than another person except in their effort to please Almighty God. Yeah. And Almighty God is the only one who knows who's trying more than somebody else. Yeah. So, as you said, that you're not impressed and we shouldn't be impressed, but you do have some, some young Muslims who now may, might be dragging their feet to totally submit to the creator of the heavens and earth, and they might be listening to some of this, uh, I call it junk that's out there. Uh, it's kind of, it's almost like audio pornography because all of the explicit lyrics and filth that some of these rappers use. Now... Obviously, we shouldn't take any of these people as, as role models. We should take the, the best of examples, which is the last and final messenger of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. So, so, so tell us now, is it safe to say because such a beautiful name, such, such a beautiful teachings, that a human being, and you so eloquently put it one time, that something that you know is, is in our very nature, that to submit and to surrender to God alone, the Creator, being obedient to Him, being sincerely devoted to Him, correct what is not, and we're trying to explain and give a deeper understanding to those humble truth seekers, trying to enlighten the people who are out there really wanting to know the truth, who might have got confused with a lot of the things that are out there, and who best to help us explain this than somebody who was a former minister with this uh, group, but all praise and thanks is to the Creator that He guided you and guided many of uh, former people. I know myself, uh, many who were with this group who ended up coming over to the true teachings of Islam. Tell us now that uh, what, what what is the Savior's Day? Well, Savior's Day at the time when I was in the nation was a, yeah. was a day that all of the Muslims in the country, in America, uh, the members of the Nation of Islam, made a, a pilgrimage to Chicago, Illinois. That's the Hajj for them, huh? Yeah, but we didn't know the word Hajj at that yeah. time. You know, well, yeah. it was just Savior's Day. And okay. we all got together, those of us who could make the trip, went to Chicago to hear an annual address by Elijah Muhammad. Okay, now let's talk, start talking about the true teachings of Islam. Let's talk about this first pillar now. Let's explain to the people, somebody, we got their attention and they might even be a part of this nation and now they want to know how can I get with the real deal? How can I be a true submitter to the one God, i.e. as a Muslim? What is that first thing that you had to do to cross over from being with this nation to being with the being in Islam. What was, let's talk about the five pillars now. Well, the first pillar was a declaration. That's the very first thing that uh, Imam W.D. Muhammad taught us. Yeah. You know, that um, to declare publicly mm -hmm. that there's no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Now you but first he taught us, before he taught us about that Shahada, what was called the Shahadatain, or bear witness of two things. He first taught us 
what Muhammad we were talking about. Yeah, tell us now, because yeah, people hear Elijah Muhammad and they confuse it with the last and final messenger. This, yeah, we were, we were, in 1975, Imam W.D. Muhammad taught us that the messenger, the real messenger Muhammad, um, who was the real messenger of Allah, was not the one who we thought it was. It was not his father. Yeah. That, that we had to recognize and understand that the, the last prophet that was sent to mankind was uh, was sent over 1400 years ago and he explained that to us before he started telling us that we needed to to make this this open declaration mm -hmm. once we got that clear then he t told us and now this is something that you're going to have to do now yeah you know and he taught this to a whole country full of people you know and so the majority the overwhelming majority of those people who had been following his father you know um made that open declaration and myself and 